We're going to give you a travel update and... Liz got sick. And it was not pretty. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you definitely need to push past fear if you find yourself out in the middle of nowhere, camping, or even in a campground, and one of you gets sick. I mean, this is a big fear if you're full-time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you know it's going to happen in inevitably. So we are actually going to give you some tips of what to carry in your RV that you need to have in case that happens. When that happens. <laughs> when that happens. But first, we're going to give you a travel update because some of you guys have been following our journey. We left the West Coast, and we've done several videos. And uh, the whole purpose was to get to South Dakota to get my driver's license. And we have a link. It's above Paul's head. So you can read more of the details as to why I got my driver's license in South Dakota. Yeah, I mean, it was a great trip. Uh, we, of course, had some problems along the way that you might have seen in our previous videos. Life is an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> We didn't go see Mount Rushmore this time around. I had seen it about a year ago, so I didn't feel the need to go back. But if you haven't seen it, put it on your bucket list. So we stayed outside Rapid City in Hart Ranch, and it's a big community-type campground where if you had a golf cart, it would be perfect to get around. Swimming pool, tennis courts, horseback riding. A golf course. They even have a restaurant. There's hiking trails, bike trails. I could see living there year-round if it weren't for the brutal South Dakota winters. <laughs> Yeah, being a West Coast boy myself, I spent a winter in upstate New York when I was in the Army, and uh, it was the longest winter <laughs> I'd ever experienced. I mean, it, when I left there, this was 1970, and when I left there in July, there was still snow on the ground. That's, that's how cold it was. Oh my gosh, I don't know how that is in South Dakota, but I know it's pretty brutal. But we were there in a good time, and we went biking outside of Custer. Custer State Park is only 30 minutes from Hart Ranch, and um, that's a must-see, even if you don't go biking. But we biked on the Mickelson Trail. At one point along the trail, you can actually see one of the other big um, attractions in South Dakota, which is the Crazy Horse Monument. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the Mickelson Trail runs the entire height or length or something. It runs across South Dakota. It goes for more than 100 miles. Now, it's not paved, but it's very well-groomed gravel. And then what were you riding? I was on the uh, a bike that we're reviewing for the channel that you'll see a review here in the next couple of weeks, Some, a month, something yeah. like that. It's a fat tire folding full suspension bike, which we'll go into it more when we do the review, but I haven't seen any other full suspension folding bike yet. Then we did Needles Highway. We highly recommend this drive, but I really feel like they need better signage. It was stressful, right? Yeah, there, it's, there's a couple of places on that where, you, of course, there's two tunnels, two pretty narrow tunnels that you go through. One is called the Eye of the Needle. You know, it would not be stressful if you had like a Mini Cooper, but we were in our full-size truck, and yeah. that was the problem is that when other full-size vehicles were coming the opposite direction, it basically felt like a one-lane road. It is not much wider than a single-lane highway. We dropped our wheels off the pavement a couple of times. If you have the option, do it in a smaller car. <laughs> Absolutely. And in fact, on one of the tunnels, we folded in our mirrors. Oh, yeah, we had to. so narrow. Yeah, the eye of the needle is, is um, even with our mirrors folded in, I... We, we actually sucked in our breath when we went through, right? <laughs> we did. We were like, oh, oh my gosh. Well, now, the other drive we took was really nice, and it wasn't as scary. That was uh, Spearfish Canyon. Oh, Spearfish Canyon. And that runs from Spearfish, which is a town in, in South Dakota. It's right at the border. It goes, you can take it all the way into Deadwood. So then we moved on. So we actually spent, I guess, a little bit, about a week. Yeah. So that was something that we learned. So most of you know that when we started this trip from Washington, we were, you know, on this mission and we stayed every place two and three nights as we crossed, you know, into Idaho, yeah. into Montana. And then when we arrived in South Dakota, we were only supposed to be there three nights. And we realized that that is just too much travel for us because we're used to staying usually in Thousand Trails campgrounds, usually two to three weeks at a time. And it was just too much travel. We were worn out, so we changed our schedule and we decided to do a full week. Yeah. And yeah. that was the smartest thing. So if you're trip planning, 
definitely look at breaking it up and staying longer, particularly when you finally have gotten to a destination. Just stay a little bit longer if you can. Yeah, you have to find your comfort zone. Uh, for us, it's uh, it's m more like 14 days. It's kind of is is kind of our sweet spot as far as where how long we want to stay in one place. From there, we went to Silk, Colorado. So on the way to Silk, we stayed at a Cracker Barrel and we were reminded why we don't boondock, right? <laughs> yeah, security is a big issue for me. And I had a hard time getting to sleep because I was worried about somebody coming and stealing the 50 amp cable that, that we had out and, and hooked up to our generator. You know, we sleep better in campgrounds. I mean, that's just us. That's another thing if you're thinking about the full-time RV life is you'll find your comfort area. Do you like to do a lot of boondocking? Does it bother you if you stay at a Cracker Barrel or a Walmart? For us, we sleep better in campgrounds. Yeah. So then we get to Silt. Silt KOA is where we stayed at. And that was a lovely campground. Beautiful campground right on the Colorado River. Literally runs right through the park. Right, there's even a little island you can go to that's part yeah. of the campground. Run by some very nice people. When we got there, one of the people came out in, in this golf cart and showed us where the where the site was that we were going to pull into, which is not unusual. But when we pulled in, he said, do you need help setting up? I'm like, whoa. And I was like, wow. Service. Yeah. <laughs> They were lovely, and there's something about staying on the water. So if you're out looking at different campgrounds and your your trip planning, I would recommend to stay on water whenever you can. I yeah, mean, it's, absolutely. Yeah. And by the way, if you're coming from the Denver area to get to Silt, you're going through the Eisenhower Tunnel, mm -hmm. which um, is no big deal. It's not. No, there's plenty of 13 feet four is what the height of our rig is, mm -hmm. and 13 six is the maximum that you're allowed to but, have. But before you go in the tunnel. What do you have to do? Turn off your propane. This can be controversial because half the people that RV leave the propane on on their fridge. And we do. We're that half. There are other half people that say no. They leave the propane off and there's arguments for leaving it off. There's arguments for leaving it on. Yeah. And it's just yeah, it's one go... of those Ford versus Chevy things. <laughs> <laughs> you go on to any full-time RV or any RV um, blog on, on Facebook and, and you will find that argument going going on at times. Well, and some people say, well, you could have a blowout and your, you know, it could affect your propane, but there's a check valve. There's a safety in place that should there be a blowout and it hits your propane line, there's a check valve that instantly stops that propane. And I've been RVing since the 90s. I'm on camper number eight and I've always had the propane on, but if you don't want to have it on, I respect that. Uh, but we we pulled off and shut our propane off and then and then turned it on. I, I don't think we actually turned it on. We until... forgot and then we forgot to turn it back we, on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now one thing that that I've been out here on the road. We've both been out on the road um, pretty almost two years. In fact, it's two years tomorrow for me. We're filming this on the seventeenth, and uh, I left on my trip on the eighteenth of October in two thousand eighteen. So tomorrow is my anniversary, but. One of the biggest fears that I've had of uh, being out on the road, especially when I was solo, was getting sick. Um, luckily, knock wood, I haven't yet, but um, unfortunately Liz did. <laughs> I seem to be the guinea pig because when I was solo, some of you remember I broke my hand. Big fear is being out here solo and not being able to do things. Like I couldn't drive, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't handle my rig or anything. And um, we have a video about that and how Paul saved the day. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I got sick and we really don't know what it was, some kind of maybe food poisoning or sun poisoning. Yeah, we'd gone to Sedona and taken this really beautiful ride, but it was a really hot day and, and I was I started feeling lightheaded. So I stopped and told Liz, let's, let's go. Uh, let's go back to the to the truck and, and load up. When we got back to, to the rig, we were both just whipped. And you actually, you took a nap. I, t I took a nap. But anyway, my body, for whatever reason, you know, and, and here's the thing. If you're in a campground, likely you're out in the woods somewhere. You're probably far away from a store. And if there's two of you, you probably don't want to leave the sick person to go get something. So we have a checklist of things that you really ought to have in the rig, even if you're only gone for a weekend. So the first thing um, that we did was we took my temperature. So I started feeling sick, took my temperature. So you want to have a thermometer with you and we'll have links below of all the things that we recommend. Another thing we have in the rig with us is an oxinator and uh, 
Oximeter, maybe? Oximeter? I don't know. what. It, uh... Oximeter, I think. In this day and age, it's something that's, that's good to have. It measures the oxygen level in your blood. Yeah, yeah. If you've ever been in a hospital, you've probably had one. They stick it on your finger and it, and it gives you a number, usually sometime in some place in the high 90s, unless mm. you're really, really sick. It's a good way to know whether you're getting oxygen in your blood. Right, and mine was 99, so, so that was good. Um, and then I actually started getting sick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, na nausea. <laughs> a... Yes, nausea. So um, we had and still have Alka-Seltzer, in, and we definitely, you know, if, if that's something that you'll take, have that on board. And then Pepto-Bismol, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Ice packs are a good idea. If you if you get a fever, you're going to want to bring that fever down. And, and ice packs are, are a good way to do that. Mm -hmm. And fluids like uh, Pedialyte. Pedialyte or, is or a good Gatorade. one. Yeah, Gatorade. Just, mm -hmm. There's lots of them on the market. Take your pick. So the next day so, I was really sore um, because basically I threw up all night, right? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so my it, so all I wanted was something cold. I make smoothies every morning for my breakfast. Um, strawberries, bananas, orange juice, and protein powder. So I had a smoothie in the morning and then a smoothie for lunch. And also I was craving popsicles or like a light ice cream. So it might be a good idea to keep that kind of thing in stock. Yeah. Oh, and soup. That was a, that was the best thing was that the next day I was like, I just want to eat soup. And we had one can of minestrone soup and that, that soup saved the day. So just think about what you might want. If you do get sick on the road, we certainly don't wish that on you. But if you, especially if you're full time, you know, it's going to be something that could likely happen at some point. Yeah. So just think about what it is that you crave when you get sick and just keep it on board. So let us know what we missed or what we might have missed uh, traveling through South Dakota, Wyoming, Colorado. And let us know what we might have missed for RV must-haves in the sick bay. And then we will see you in the next video. We'll see you there. <laughs>